Bradley Simmons, welcome to the Personal Best Podcast. Thank you, Ruby, for having me. How are you doing? Good, thank you. Had a lovely weekend and uh, ready to start a busy week. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. nice. We're in a newly renovated studio. Yeah, it's lovely. If anyone's watching on YouTube, so it's very nice yeah. to uh, have you here. Really nice sofa as well, nice and Yeah, relaxed. comfy yes, and relaxed. <laughs> so for anyone that doesn't know you, um, can I just ask you to do a little personal introduction? Mm -hmm. What do you do? Where are you from? That yes, kind of thing. so I'm born and raised in West London. Mm -hmm. It's only around the corner from here. Um, I started as a footballer, a youngster. My dream was to be a professional footballer. Things didn't work out. So it was an easy transition to go into the personal training route, which I absolutely loved. Um, and then training in celebrities, a few footballers, um, I turned into an influencer. My, <laughs> my following on Instagram grew. So that became my path. Always wanted to go down the strength and conditioning route, working at football clubs. That wasn't my path. Um, and then 10 years in industry now, I'm an online coach. I've got my own app. Um, and I'm just, yeah, just enjoying it, enjoying it. It's been a journey for sure. Yeah, definitely. That was good. That was like a brief intro. Cause sometimes I ask people that and then it's like half the podcast is yeah, no, gone. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. But yeah. there's, there's obviously so much of that that I want to like dig into. I'm sure everyone listening has got so many questions at how you kind of went from starting out playing football to getting to where you are now. Mm. So what was that transition like? Why did the football thing not work out? Yeah, very cliche. Injuries didn't go my way, mm. um, which was definitely a setback. Um, and I look back and I'm thankful for it now, you know. At the yeah. time, it was really tough. Um, back then, mental health or depression or anxiety wasn't actually spoken about. And I definitely struggled with it then because my dream was absolutely shattered. Uh, but luckily for me, I had a strong family, strong friends around me. And I've always been that very ambitious mindset. I've always been quite optimistic. So I said to me, all right, what's plan B? What's plan B? Mm. And I have to do something I enjoy. And I looked into PE teacher. I looked into becoming a football coach, a football agent. Um, but I just fell in love with the idea of becoming a personal trainer. Um, I love working with people. I like helping people improve their li help life, their fitness levels, their, m their mindset. And being at QPR at the time, obviously being injured for about 10 months with an ACL injury, I learned a lot about nutrition. I learned mm. a lot about the body, how to strengthen the body, key exercises, what to do, what not to do. So I thought, okay, I can use that knowledge that I've, that I've learned myself uh, and I can channel that into a positive positive way, which was yeah. transitioning to a PT in. Um, and at the age of 20, I worked my absolute nuts off. A lot of people now look at me and the, the content I create on Instagram, they, they say, oh, you're lucky. Do you know what I mean? It's like they don't understand the graft that I did when I was 20 years of age. I uh, borrowed my dad's bike, living at home at the time in West London, cycling to Chiswick in the pouring rain, in the freezing cold, uh, to start my first client at six o'clock in the morning. And that's what you got to do. So it's been a lot of hard work. And it's still, it doesn't stop now. The hard work behind the scenes now is, 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 is a lot. Yeah, that's so interesting though. And I always love knowing people's journeys of how they got to where they are today. Because it's exactly that thing. Like you say, people look at your content and they think, He's had it easy. Mm. It's just pure luck. You know, he's got the good looks, yeah. talent, whatever. But actually there has been so much hard work that's gone into that in order for you to be as successful as you are now. But I wanted to ask you, what do you think makes you a good PT? And I know PT is only like a small part of your, <laughs> yeah. your whole job, but why do you think you've had the success that you have? I think it's the, it's the energy. It's been able to adapt to different clientele. Mm. Some clients need that tough, tough love. And some clients need more of an arm around their shoulder where you can obviously uh, support them in a different way. Also, my ability to, um, to have a bit of banter and make sure that every client I have feel comfortable in, in my presence. Um, I find if you're too scientific or you're too strict as a personal trainer, you can actually push people away. Mm. so you've got to come with good energy and I always say if you want to be a successful PT you've got to present yourself very well I always say so you've got to dress the part <laughs> that really matters you've got to smell good uh, you've got to have a smile on your face because at the end of the day there's a lot of people going through hard times and they come into you to change their mindset to change their physique so you need to be that positive energy for them to go okay I love spending time with this person yeah. and Joe, you know what I'm going to tell my friends to go to this person as well because I'm feeling great they're going to feel great too so it's good to have the knowledge. It's really important to have the knowledge. You have to have the knowledge. But you also need to have the energy, the personality, and the likability. And, um, yeah, and, and the salesmanship. Mm, definitely. <laughs> that's the word. Definitely. No, that's super interesting. And I've got a few friends who 
are at the beginning of their PT career, yeah. they are the people that are cycling to the gym at 6 a.m. Yeah. and they leave at you know, yeah. 8 p.m. Yeah. And they have to do that work. They yeah, have to. definitely. And I've got so much respect for them and for, mm. for the grind that they're putting in. But I do feel like the PT industry is becoming quite a saturated market with lots of things. So how, what would your advice be for people who are wanting to get into the job or who are in the job, but they want to maybe level up? Like you've made quite a big name for yourself yeah. in the industry. And I was probably very fortunate at the time Instagram had just started. And just yeah. before me, you had obviously Joe Wicks throwing broccoli into a pan, you <laughs> yeah. know? Um, and that was a good inspiration for me to get my content out of there. So um, I was very, very, very fortunate. I was probably one of the original fitness influencers but now it's so saturated mm -hmm. and rightly so because it's a great career um and everyone wants to do it so my advice to those people is obviously work hard still do those crazy hours in the gym start tapping people on the shoulders hey do you want to have a 20 minute taster this is what i can deliver and i can guarantee you're going to enjoy it that's why i used to do next thing you've got a clientele mm. so the first six months of pt and i didn't earn a lot at all i remember my first paycheck was about 400 quid but I knew I had to put the work in. Yeah. And then the following six months, I was the biggest earner in that gym just through hard work. Mm. Um, your Instagram is your website. So you need to put the time in. You set some time maybe on the weekends to create some content. You need to create valuable content. So you need to educate your followers. You need to um, motivate your followers. Um, and even if, the look, a lot of people, they don't get views. They don't get likes to begin with. And it can be very demotivating and you yeah. just sack it off you gotta stick at it because don't worry about your followers growing the type of clients that you want to get they look at your website which is your instagram or maybe your tiktok mm. and they go do you know what i like this person i like what their value you are i like what they're teaching i like their energy i'm gonna train with this person because back in the day i remember on instagram for example i'd get a shout from one of my my clientele who had a large following i'd have so many thousand followers follow me straight away in today's world, people are very precise and very picky who they follow. It's true. So yeah. they'll now look at your profile and probably watch five, six pieces of your content before they decide to follow you. So if you want a clientele or if you want to become an online coach, you have to put a time and effort in creating a good content. You need to create your website. Mm. You can't expect to create, get clientele if you're not selling yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So that's my advice to new PTs. Obviously, put the hours on the gym floor. You need to learn who you are as a PT. You have to. But also learn to create that content on a Saturday, Sunday. You have to sacrifice those weekends if you want to be successful like I did when I was younger. Uh, and it's all about consistency. Mm, definitely. I really think like social media is changing the game. Yeah. Also, social media in itself is changing constantly and yeah. you have to adapt to what's yeah. popular and what's trending and, yeah. and all of that. So that's such good advice. But you've been in the fitness industry for the past 10 years. 10 years, yeah. Starting as a PT God. when you were like 20 and now... Like yesterday. Doing huge things. So, um, and I know you've worked with lots of people, including like high profile celebrities. Mm -hmm. So I want to ask you a pretty broad question, okay. which is where do you think most people are going wrong with their health and fitness? Um, first of all, people want a quick fix. Mm. They want results straight away. They're not willing to change their lifestyle, which is, which is dangerous. So they continue their bad, healthy lifestyle, but then they're doing a quick fix or doing a fad diet, expecting to get results straight away, which actually causing more damage to their gut microbiome to the cortisol levels yeah. and they get more frustrated and then they yo-yo um that's massively one so people haven't got the patience or not willing to put the work in or not willing to be consistent um i always say to my clientele look you're going to see change in the first two to four weeks more so your energy levels and your mental health because you feel good but when it comes to your physical appearance it's going to take four to six months so mm. you need to be patient with me you need to trust in the process what's that thing that's like in two weeks, you'll feel different. Yeah. In four weeks, you'll notice a difference yeah. like physically. And then in like eight weeks, people, other people yeah, will notice. Start getting compliments You've got to wait. You've got to like, wait, yeah. A while. And then when people do start giving you compliments, don't take your foot of the gas. <laughs> That's what people do. You get your first compliment. You're like, oh, well, if, I, if I'm getting finally getting the compliments, oh, fuck it, I'm gonna just going to get my cross on again or hmm. I'm going to go back to my old ways. You can't do that. Mm. Um, and that's like the slimming world. That's what they... It's like a dinosaur now. I get a lot of clients come from me like, I've been doing Slimming World. I just realized it's not working. I keep going back there. Why am I going back there? My philosophy as a coach or as a good coach is after six months, you don't need another coach again because you've transformed and you've got the knowledge and understanding of how yeah. to maintain You it. need to make yourself like obsolete in a way yeah. that those people can then carry on. This is it. 100%. 100%. Yes. Yeah. 100%.
Um, and also with the fitness industry, like right now, the running running is a massive trend. Mm -hmm. So you've got a lot of people going, well, running's great. I, know I want to join a run club, which is brilliant. However, they're not doing the strength training alongside it or the nutrition inside it. Um, so yes, running burns calories. It's good for, for if your mental health releases endorphins. It's good social now with all these run clubs. However, are you doing the right resistance training? Are you hydrating yourself correctly? Are you fueling yourself correctly? One, to drop your body fat percentage. Two, to fuel your runs correctly. Three, to strengthen the key areas to enhance your performance when it comes to running. Um, because if you're doing a run club and then having a few beers after or, or if going on a weekend and consuming those calories because you feel like you've just done a half marathon, great. Mm. You're going to be left very frustrated, mm. which then means you're going to sack it off. So you've got to do the right stuff as well. So... My advice is always, can you invest in a guide, in a program, or can you just seek the best um, advice from, obviously, experts or friends who are doing very well? Yeah, no, that's that's great advice. And I think you're so right about the looking for a quick fix thing. Like, it's not magic. Yeah. Like, it's hard, but it's not magic. Yeah. All these people that you look at who have created a healthy lifestyle for themselves, they've just adopted like certain habits and a way of life yeah. that keeps them fit and healthy yeah it's not the apple cider vinegar no and it's, it's not, not the like magic vitamins no. but it's scary that because some people have to create these fad diets to earn a living mm. and that's that's scary you know um and that's that's the worry like intimate fasting is a massive thing right now and there's new evidence or new studies to showcase it's not actually good for women especially yeah. going through the premenopausal stage yeah. because it can obviously affect your cortisol levels <laughs> and while you're already stressed or you're sleep deprived it's not very good so the winner is always a nutritious whole food diet high protein is the most important macronutrient for you to change your body composition mm -hmm. we need good sources of fiber for our obviously our digestion our gut microbiome and then we need good fats especially women for the hormonal balance and fat is great for our brain it's good for fuel as well so if you have a well-balanced diet you hydrate yourself, and if you're doing a lot of riding, make sure you do your electrolytes. There's a lot of people just drinking water. You need to add some electrolytes to the water. I know mm. you're you like you're running as well, mm. um, and yeah, resistance training needs to be the main priority for all of us humans because obviously we need to protect, protect our skeleton. Uh, we also need to make as we age, muscle mass reduces. For women going through the premenopausal stage, their bone density decreases as well as men. Yeah, for testosterone levels. For men and women, resistance training is massively important. You know, so 70% of your training needs to be resistance and then 30% needs to be cardio-based, obviously for your cardiovascular health, for the social aspect, mm. uh, for the endorphins, um, and just to maintain your weight. That's so good. I really hope everyone listening is like, yeah, I'm going to do that Yeah, and now. it's not rocket science. It's, it's not, not rocket science. And I think that's the problem, isn't it, with social media? Yeah. There's so much conflicting information it can feel so overwhelming that you're like oh yeah. where do I even start yeah. what do I do but actually what you've just said there is exactly the protocol that people need to follow yeah. and you um made a piece of content on Instagram and you said that you've always stayed away from just being a PT because for you it's a lifestyle and mm -hmm. I just wondered if you could explain like what that lifestyle looks like like how have you managed to stay strong and healthy for however long yeah. most of your life <laughs> well for me it started as a young kid like, mm. i was the youngest of four so I had two older brothers so if i wanted to fight my brothers i knew how to be pretty strong <laughs> uh but no i played for chelsea from the age of seven years of age so mm. i've always had it in me and i always say to like, my friends or i say it to my clients make sure you get your kids doing sport from a very young age it's so important not only does it get them fit and strong it builds resilience it, yeah. you learn about failure you learn about teamwork you learn a lot and you yeah you just get strong you, you build your mental strength um, so that's key. And I guess being at QPR, I learned a lot about strength and conditioning. Um, I had my first six pack when I lived in Iceland, <laughs> which was <laughs> mental. So I learned even more about body composition then in mm. Iceland, because as a professional footballer, you have to be below 10% body fat. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's a big thing. So you get tests from preseason. Um, and if you're injured, you get your body fat per uh, percentage tested quite often. Mm. And 10% is good because obviously yeah, you just have to be an athlete. Um, so I've just practiced what I preach for me. It's like, if my clients want to work with me, I've got to be in great shape physically and mentally. One, I love being in great shape because it builds my confidence. Yeah. Uh, people say to me, what's your best fashion advice? It's like being in good shape because then you can wear, wear simple things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I say, that, I say that too. <laughs> so it's good for my confidence. Mm. It's good for my self-esteem. I feel fit. I feel healthy because of the foods I'm consuming. So look, my lifestyle and what I preach 
a byproduct of that is that I'm in great shape, you know? I prioritize my health. I sleep well, which is the most important thing. People say to me, what's the most important thing between sleep, training, and eating healthy? Mm -hmm. They're all massively important. But sleep is probably the most important. Massively. Yeah, yeah. Massively. So sleep, nutrition, and training, those three together. And it, like I said, it's not rocket science. If you, get, if you prioritize those three, you're going to be in great physical shape, which is obviously going to help your mental health. It's going to help your confidence levels. It's going to mm. help your self-esteem. So for me, it's about practicing what I preach. Sure. But that's really interesting because that's what you value. And I think your values then dictate your behaviors. So mm -hmm. if you value feeling good and looking good mm -hmm. and, you know, wanting to be active, then you do all of those things. Yeah. Whereas people who don't value that thing, maybe yeah. they value other stuff like the night out and the partying yeah. and stuff then that's your behaviours, that dictates yeah. your behaviours. and also your environment. Yeah. Because if you go to the pub and there's six lads at a pub and they're all drinking, they're in that comfort zone where, well, you're doing it, you're doing it, it means I'm in the same boat. Mm. But if you actually, if they didn't drink for six weeks, they'd feel so much better. Mm. But the problem is, would they be having the same conversation if they weren't drinking? So I always say, are they drinking partners or are they friends? Yeah, um, so true. And yeah, and I say that to a lot of my online clients. Like, I know you like a beer. Let's try and reduce it. You're going to feel a lot better. And it does. Alcohol is the worst thing for your gut microbiome. It's the worst thing for your sleep. And if you have bad sleep, then obviously you're going to be low in energy. You're going to be less creative. You're going to be less ambitious. And you're going to have that brain fog. Mm. Don't get me wrong. I love a Guinness every now and again. <laughs> it was my mate's 30th on the weekend and I had four. And the next day I, I needed to do a lot. There was a lot on my to-do list. Half of it got done. Because I just had a bit of brain fog, I felt tired. Yeah. So it goes to show. So, yeah, a lot of willpower. Um, but your environment is massively important. Mm. And I spoke to a nutritionist and he said you have to make your environment conducive to your goal. Yes. And so, like, you almost have to make it easy for yourself, like, buy healthy food. Yes. Make sure there is a gym nearby if yes. you want to go to oh, the gym. 100%. Be friends with people who are going to say, should we go out and go for a walk or go for a run? Yeah. All of that's going to help. Yeah. Massively. Yeah. And don't go wrong, a night out is great for your social. You needed that every yeah. now and again. But if you're working, like if you're part of that rep race and you're working Monday to Friday and you're extremely exhausted, the last thing you should do for your health is go on the lash or do a, a, a all day brunch. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. What you should be doing as people are doing with these run clubs, you should be taking care of your 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 health in that weekend. That's the, your two days to really just focus on your on your health. And then what you can do then is have a side hustle. You got now your brain switched on to maybe do a side hustle to mm -hmm. get you out of that rut race. I always say to my friends, what's your passion? What do you actually want to do? Because I know you don't enjoy your nine to five. Mm. And they're like, well, I'd love to do this. I said, the problem is you haven't got time or energy to do that because you're spending your weekends doing this. If you actually did not what I do, but if you actually prioritize your health, maybe you go on hikes, you, you find a different hobby. You now have got the the mental ability to go, do you know what? That side hustle can become a reality. And that becomes mm, your new hobby. Definitely, definitely. I've heard Stephen Bartlett talk about this idea that if you looked at time as like poker chips, then yeah. every time you, I don't understand poker, every time yeah. you deal a, a chip or <laughs> yeah, something, yeah. then that's you spending an hour of your time. Yeah. And it's like, what do you want to do with those 24 chips that you have? Yeah. So it's like, okay, eight of them, maybe you spend at a job that you don't like, mm -hmm. but then can you spend two of them at the gym? And yeah. then one of them, doing something that you are passionate about yeah. like if you're spending you know 40 hours a week working a job you don't really like yeah. you can spend at least six or seven of them doing something that you are 100%, passionate about. of course and you look at some success stories you got grace beverly you got george heaton you got ben francis they yeah. grafted from university they saw it's a side mad. hustle as they joined from university mm. so those university students are you just getting to your third year go okay finally need to work hard or from the get-go, have you got your side hustle while you're working yeah. hard? And I do question myself sometimes for starting a podcast <laughs> in the last six months of my degree, but also... No, but you've started. That's doing, the most important. You started. Going. Exactly. I'm telling you, in five years, yours will be up there with a the diary CEO. I'm telling you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I want to um, like ask a few questions about why you've, again, been able to be as successful mm -hmm. as you have and... Something you said that I thought was really interesting was the harder I work, the luckier I get. Yeah. What did you mean by that? Well, you have to make your own luck in life. You can't expect it to be served on a plate for you. You know, you have to you have to graft. Um, I've been very fortunate through my hard work. I've met people because people 
have noticed my hard work, who want to work with me, then introduce me to people. Mm. Because people, if, you, if you're a hard worker, people trust you. You know, people will want to bring you along to their journey as well. So you make your own opportunities through hard work 100%. But it's key you have to work smart. There was a time in my career I was probably working too hard, but I didn't have a plan. So mm. I had a vision and an action, but there was no plan in between that. So as I've got older, it's all right, what's my vision? All right, what's my plan? Now it's time for action. Um, but yeah, 100% hard work. <laughs> you make your own work a lot from hard work, 100%. Mm. Um, and it frustrates me when people say oh, I'm lucky. I'm like, yeah, Joe, you know I am lucky, but I'm having my own luck. And you have to make your own luck. Yeah, definitely. Have you heard the quote that some um, luck is when preparation meets opportunity? Yes. And I think that's a really nice way yeah. to frame it because the preparation is the doing of the thing. It's the work that you've already put in. Yeah. And once you've put in work, opportunities start to present themselves to you. 100%. And it's the same with the podcast. Like I had a bit of a nasty comment on my YouTube recently. You're always going to get that. This lady saying, oh, I wonder how she gets all these big guests when she's only got 800 subscribers. Um, people wouldn't waste their time. Time is money. And, you know, acting like I've got some big yeah. connections and I know people in high places. Like, it's not that at all. It's everyone that's agreed to come and have a conversation with me, I hope, is because they see that there's value in the podcast yeah. and they want to have a genuine conversation. 100%. So it's not luck. It's, it's not luck. Like I said, you make your own luck. Like you've, mm. you've obviously had a vision of what you want to do. You've obviously put the time and effort to figure out, okay, where's the best studio? Yeah. What type of content do I want to create? Yeah. What does my podcast going to be like? Like I saw you because you came up on my explore page mm. and I liked one of your pieces of your content and then you got in touch with me. Yeah. It's as simple as that. Yeah, you know? yeah, so yeah. you make your own life for sure. Yeah. And sometimes things happen randomly. Like I always reference the Mo Gauda episode who was an incredible guest and he just walked into the restaurant. But I went and had a conversation with him yeah. and I started speaking about the podcast and then yeah. he said, so when can I come on? Yeah. So you put yourself out there. But and a lot I of people so struggle with that confidence <laughs> to put themselves out there in yeah, the first place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess you have to believe in yourself. You believe in that you're going to be a good podcast mm. presenter, right? A lot of people struggle with that first step as I haven't got the confidence to go and do that. Definitely. And you have to step outside your comfort zone. I remember at 20 years of age, turning up to John Terry's house, turning up to Jamie Redknapp's house. I'm thinking, I'm not qualified or experienced for this at all. Wow. But this is an opportunity I can't let go. I have to give it my best shot. And if I come out of this and it doesn't work out for me, then fine, I've given it a shot. And I did it. Good energy. It's so important, your energy. You have to have a smile on your face. You have to believe in yourself. And I was training for the next three, four years. Do you understand? That's amazing, yeah. Um, so, yeah, you have to put yourself out there. But you could have so easily let that critical voice get the better of you and say, no, I'm not qualified for this. I'm not good enough, yeah. so I won't try. Yeah. It's like, no, I'm yeah. here. Let's go for it yeah. and just see what happens. And trust me, the hate I got from personal trainers who've got incredible degrees, have worked 10 years into the industry. I got so much hate. It was ridiculous. Wow. But like, again, a client, a, a, a client doesn't necessarily care about your degrees. They yeah. want your energy. So if you can deliver a good training session, which I learned from the likes of QPR and at Chelsea when I was at Chelsea as a kid, I had the knowledge and understand how to provide a good workout session. Um, and then there's that down to your energy. Yeah, definitely. And your likability. Yeah. And I want to go back to um, a point you just made is that you've got to put yourself out of your comfort zone. And mm -hmm. I noticed, sorry, I've been stalking you. I was stalk right. everybody. <laughs> well, you have to, though. You're uh, doing homework. I know, <laughs> I know. But you also said uh, where there is no challenge, there yeah. is no growth. Yes. And I wondered what have been the biggest challenges in your career that have yeah. then perhaps allowed you to grow. Yeah. Um, I guess the lockdown was a challenge. The beginning of the lockdown period was tough because, shit, well, I'm not, I can't train my 10 clients this week, which means I'm not earning so-and-so mm. because I'm not allowed to. Okay, that's a big challenge. Well, how am I going to earn that money? What yeah. am I going to do? Yeah. So you quickly, you, you have a little brainstorm. Okay, cool. Well, look, Instagram's to my advantage. There is a live. I'm going to start doing live workouts. It's going to keep me busy. And it's very nerve wracking to begin with. Like, is anyone going to turn up? Mm. So that could stop people there and then. The imposter syndrome, right? Oh, is anyone going to turn up? Am I good enough to do that? So luckily for me, it just it went off the roof. You know, I had 10,000 people every morning waking up with me at half seven, eight o'clock in the morning doing my workouts. So that was like, okay, cool. That's an opportunity now to create that into an app and bring those key, key people who love my workouts to bring them on as subscribers. So it's all about adaption. You're mm. always going to have obstacles. You're always going to have bumps in the road where you have to go again. I've just done it now. It's like, okay, is the content that used to do really well for me on Instagram, 
it's not doing so well for me anymore. I have yeah. to adapt, but I can't do it by myself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to invest, which comes out of the profits, to employ two new people. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And they, one of them is a strategist and one's a videographer. And together as a team, we're going to come up with some great ideas. And hopefully that's going to boost my engagement once again. So you have to, you have to take risks. You have to invest. Um, and you have to come out of your comfort zone. And you have to swallow your ego, for sure. Yeah. And that's a tough thing. Yeah. As a, as a, <laughs> it's a tough thing to do. <laughs> but as you get older, you realise, like, you have to invest in your business. You have to invest in yourself massively. Mm. Improvise, adapt, mm -hmm. overcome. There you go. Love that. But I think that's quite difficult sometimes when it feels like you're not necessarily going backwards, but it feels like you're yeah. in like the mud a bit, like you're mm, a bit stuck. Yeah. Mm. And it's like, how am I going to then go forward yeah. and actually make the progress that I want to make? Like, exactly. how do you transition through that yeah. phase? Yeah, it's tough. And a lot of brainstorming, speaking to the right people, picking brains, mm. seeing other people. It's not competition as inspiration. Well, they're doing it, so I'm, I'm inspired by them. I'm going to give it a go. Um, that's really, really important. It's really important. And for those that are just starting up, every bit of money that you earn, you have to invest it back into your business. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. Yeah. Um, like, I'm just about to launch um, a mentoring um a mentoring, so basically for online coaches who are struggling, I'm gonna, I'm about to start my own mentoring uh, company where I mentor, I teach them the ropes how to become a successful online coach. Oh, nice. Because okay. yes, it's great. You can program something brilliant. Of course you can. But can you sell yourself? Can you create the right content to bring those clients on board or to have that better engagement? Um, and how do you sustain them? How do you keep them on? All these type of things. Um, and I've obviously been an online coach for the last two years and I've massively learned through that journey and I'm in a great position now where I get people DMing me all the time. Young online coaches ask me for advice. So I'm like, Joe, what? This is my next step. But for me to that make that happen, I have to take my profits from my business and put that into there. That's mm. a risk itself. Yeah. So you're always moving. We're always moving, always adapting. Yeah, definitely. And it's um it's interesting because I think when things aren't working the way they used to, mm. the first thought is, oh, should I just quit? Like, 100%. should I just give up? And uh, I was listening to a podcast with Alex Hormozy, who's like my guru for yeah, he's life great. and business. I love his book. Yeah, he's he's really good. And one of the things he was saying is that, how do you know when to quit? And he said, my definition of quitting is, no, what did he say? My definition of quitting is like just stopping altogether. Mm -hmm. Ra whereas the way he likes to look at it is either you push forwards with something or you pivot. Mm -hmm. So like, for instance, with your Instagram, you're like, oh, things aren't performing the same well. Okay, yeah. let's pivot. What can we do differently? Yeah. What can we do next? Yeah. And I think that's so important in terms of business or any life decision, really, when yeah. things aren't going yeah, 100%, as you expected. 100%. Regroup, brainstorm. Yeah. And trial and error. Like, I did a piece of content the other day, that which the engagement went off the roof, but it was the worst thing for my business. And for the I, wrong reasons, For the wrong maybe. reasons. And that's a lesson learned. I put my hands up and I said, do you know what? I won't be doing that again. Mm. But you got to test these things, you know. What I mean? and, and I was massively coming out of my comfort zone. Um, so yeah, you got to be willing to do that. <laughs> definitely, <laughs> definitely. Especially if you're like like playing the yeah. social media game yeah. as well. Yeah, it's how you want to present yourself yeah. and yeah. what's going to resonate with certain people, what's going to do well. Mm. And it's funny, I literally posted a reel yesterday, um, and I wasn't sure whether to post it because I didn't want it to come across like I. And I now view myself as this massive success. But I basically said in that, that whenever you do something new, first people will ask you why, mm -hmm. and then they'll ask you how. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, if you're starting something like a business or a marathon challenge or you're moving to a different city, like people will ask you why you're doing it. Yep. And it's only once you've achieved some success that they then ask how yep. you did it. 100%. And it's funny, because I now get asked by a lot of people, how do I start a podcast? Yeah. What do I do? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I still find it crazy because yeah. I very much feel like I'm at the beginning of my journey. But it's funny to reflect back and think only a few months ago, people are like, like, why are you doing a podcast? What's the point? How, What's are, you that? Gonna, how, are, you, how are you gonna compete with everyone else? Exactly, like everyone's got a podcast now, but yeah. it's the same with people coming to you for advice of how do I become a successful PT? Like, yeah. I'm sure people were a bit skeptical at the start. Well, I remember when I first was a PT and I started my Instagram and my hashtag at the time was SimoPT. <laughs> Okay. Uh, hashtag before get it done became my thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and all, all my mates taking a piss out of me, you know. Mm. Um, but now they they ask me for a coffee and then want some business advice. It's so, so it's quite funny, funny you know. 
Um, but I always say, and gran my grandma said this to me, it's like, if they're not talking about you, you're not doing well. Yeah. So you just, it's part of being successful is criticism, mm. uh, a lot of bitching mm. going on, a lot of jealousy, a lot of envious energy. Um, and that's either going to swallow you up or that's going to fuel you. Yeah. So when people are jealous of me or, or jealous of my success or and they're, they're, I hear people bitching or I get comments on my Instagram that just fuels me even more to become even more mm. successful. And that's, I think it's important to have that mindset. Mm. Uh, someone said to me recently, I think it was when I posted the the hate corner got on YouTube. Yeah. They were like, you only face resistance upstream. Yeah. Mad. And I really like that yeah. because it's so true. And it's, it's that, uh, that's, that's a great, that's brilliant. Yeah. It's also that quote of like, you won't face criticism from people who are doing worse no, than of you. Course. 100%. And it's so true. Like I recently went to a meet and greet with Sam Sulek, um, who people don't know, he's like a bodybuilder. He's just gone so viral on social media. So yeah. I went to this meet and greet with the intention to get him on the podcast. Okay. I'm Still sure he's... holding on to hope with that one. Oh, he'll come on, he'll listen to this, he'll come yeah, on. Yeah, but um, we were waiting in the queue for four hours. So I ended up talking to this um, random guy uh, and he was sort of poking fun at the fact I had a podcast and was like, oh, so, you know, you just want to get him on, blah, 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 blah. And it, it took me back a little bit. And anyway, Convo moved on and I said to him, oh, so what do you do? And he's like, oh, I should work in a pub, nothing much. Exactly, there you go. And that's not to knock people working in a pub. No. I've literally always worked in hospitality. Yeah. But even the way he framed it, yeah. he's not loving what he's doing. She's not. So who is he to then criticise me for trying yeah. to do something else? And he currently hasn't got the confidence to step out of his comfort zone and try something different. So he's actually quite envious that you are literally got the willpower yeah. <laughs> and the confidence to try something. Exactly, um, exactly. And everyone's got, in their, everyone's got it in them to try something different. If it doesn't work out, it's fine. You gave a good shot. Mm. There's so many things I'd try to do and it didn't work out, so I pivoted to something different. Yeah. And I'll continue doing that yeah. all my life. I don't think I'll be ever, I'll, I'll be 70 trying to do something. <laughs> something <laughs> new. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Always. Yeah. No, it's it's really interesting. And I kind yeah. of walked away from that interaction with like. But use it as fuel. Use trying. it as like, Joe, you know man, I'm going to show Kate. You're going to watch my podcast one day <laughs> with uh, Sam Or Sulek. you're going to listen to it with <laughs> Sam Singh and go, oh, God, I owe that girl an apology. And when you walk into the pub, Hopefully he can give you a drink on the house. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll see about that. <laughs> um, but obviously this is like, well, this is the personal best podcast. Yeah. And uh, my goal with every episode is to try and give people some advice on how they can better their own lives. Yeah. And I think really tap into their own potential. That's something I've really realized since doing these episodes is yeah. a lot of people don't realize their potential. Yeah. And um, you shared a piece of content that was advice for people who are maybe feeling a bit low or anxious. Mm -hmm. um, and within that, you said that you need to get sleep, mm -hmm. uh, you need to set goals and prioritize your physical health. Yeah. I know you mentioned it earlier, but I wonder if you could just expand on those things and I don't know, really give people advice who maybe feel yeah. a bit stark. Well, I was, when people, there's a lot of mental health, obviously it's brilliant that everyone's talking about mental health and making awareness of mental health. But for you to tackle your mental health, you need to start with your physical health. You need your brain, I always say brain performance. I'm not talking about six pack and abs and strong arms and strong glutes. Mm. I'm talking about your brain, your brain performance. Mm -hmm. um, and I like to, instead of saying mental health, I'm like, how is your brain performance like? What's your brain health like? And that's massively important. And if you have good, strong brain health, that brings creativity, ambition, uh, and just a positive mindset on life. Yeah. It gives you that optimism that you need. Yeah. So focus on that. Focus on your physical health, and that's going to give you a brain performance. And how do you perform? Uh, exercise is known to improve your brain performance. Eating the right foods, having good fats, your blueberries, your avocados, your oily oily fishes. All these things are really, really beneficial for your brain health. Sleep is massively important for your brain health. If you have a bad sleep, that drops your testosterone by thirty percent. Us men and women, we need to trust our own for us, to, our brain to work, for us to be sharp, for us to yeah. be ambitious. Yeah. So physical health is the number one thing to tackle your mental health for sure, one hundred percent. Um. So start getting into a good, healthier routine. Sleep is, like I mentioned, is massively important. How do you improve your sleep? One, alcohol <laughs> it massively affects your sleep. Two, make sure you're in a very dark room. Make sure your bed routine is slow, relaxed. Come off your iPhone. You don't need that blue screen. Try and read a book listen to maybe a podcast or an audio book, maybe do some yoga, not that I do it, but mm. I'm just giving some some um, mm. some advice. And make sure your room is nice and cold as well. That's key. But you also have to make sure you're really very well hydrated before you go to bed. 
And might, some people might say, well, you need to go to the toilet and you, yeah. and you need a wee. <laughs> Um, but you need that just, just to make sure you're well hydrated because if you're not well hydrated, you don't sleep well either. Um, and it comes to goal setting, for me, it fuels progress big time. You have to have a goal in mind when it comes to your physical appearance or you want to lose weight. What's your goal? Let's get so let's have something to, to work towards, whether that's a 10K run, whether that's you want to have a deadlift, whether you got a win and come up, so you want to drop 5% body fat. We have to have a goal because mm. if without a goal, you've got no purpose. And if you haven't got a purpose, you haven't got a path. And if you ain't got a path, you're just going to sit still. <laughs> so true. Do you yeah. understand? So you have yeah. to have that goal set in. It can be small. Start small. Or aim really big. For example, you might say, do you know what? This time next year, I want to run the London Marathon because that's coming approaching. Okay, cool. How am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to start with fast-paced walking. But for me to do that, I need to get my right pair of shoes. Yeah, mm. and I need to do it three times a week. After six weeks, you're now doing 5K runs. That's a slow pace. That's fine. And builds into a 10K run. But alongside that, you need to be doing the strength training. You need to be fueling yourself correctly. A year later, you're doing the marathon and you're confident and you're so happy that you've put the work in. But not only can you run a, a marathon now, you're also feeling great. Your physical health is massively improved, which means your mental health is improved. Yeah. And you've fought the aging process. We look at people our age now and they look a lot older than they do. They should do mm. because of their lifestyle, because the amount of drinking, the rubbish that they're eating, the lack of sleep, doing a job that they don't actually enjoy doing. So, I mean, it, yeah, it, it's mad. So um, <laughs> I'm blabbering on. I can't remember what, no, what I no, said. No, 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 that's perfect. But yeah, there you go. I mean, all of those things tie into how people can better themselves. Yes. And that's exactly what this podcast is aiming yeah. to do. And sometimes episodes focus more on the fitness side of things. And sometimes I'll focus more on the mindset side of mm -hmm. things because both of them work in tandem. And it's interesting you said about um, the mental health thing because, yeah, we talk about mental health and it, it is so important. But I always think of it as like mental fitness. Mental fitness. It, which Mental is a strength, slight yeah. reframe. It's like, how are you building that? How are you mm -hmm. doing things mm -hmm. that are making you mentally fit? Mm -hmm. And looking after your body is so important yeah. because the two work hand in yeah, hand. 100%. And I'm in this slightly like stressful period right now of trying to finish my um, degree. And the easiest thing would be to just stop the exercise because mm -hmm. it takes up a lot of time. But I know if I do that, yeah. my brain's not going to work the no, same. No, no. I need the like physical yeah. movement. Sometimes I say like you have to get out of your mind and into your body mm -hmm. and you just feel so much better yeah. from it. So I agree with everything. Yeah. <laughs> and there's studies. I haven't got studies in front of me, but <laughs> if you wanted, there's so many studies to prove yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Well, I feel like that is um, all really good information, <laughs> yeah. but I'm going to ask you the same question I ask every guest, okay. which is if you had to give someone a piece of advice to help them achieve their personal best, you can share a quote or a mantra or something. What would it be? Well, one of my favorite quotes is, you don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. It's good. And that's a quote I've had ever since I started. Yeah. Um. So if you want to improve yourself, you, you have to put the work in and you have to start, mm -hmm. but you have to invest. You can't expect to do it by yourself. Um. Yeah, you have to invest and not a lot of money. You can invest in pieces of equipment at home. You can start with 5 kg dumbbells. You can start with some lighter kettlebells, but you have to invest and you have to change your environment. So just start hanging around people that look after their fitness want to improve their health and that will rub off you too that's massively important um and just set yourself smaller goals don't set yourself massive goals start small and aim big uh, that's what i always say mm. um but yeah it, it is just <laughs> literally look after your physical health and honestly everything every aspect of your life is going to improve yeah i love that so and it's so true and you don't have to be brilliant at everything to start something you want no. to do and um i had a message from someone recently it's quite funny because they sent me a really lovely message um after i posted on instagram about some things that i'm struggling with yeah because i think it's important to to be honest and admit that you have to we haven't got it all figured no, out all the no, time no. i got a really lovely message from this guy and he said imagine you're driving in a car and it's dark and you've got 100 miles in front of you but you need to get to this destination yeah but when you've got the headlights on, you can only ever see 100 yards in yeah, front. 100%. So you only ever need to see the yeah. next small part yeah, of the yeah, journey. Yeah, yeah. But you still know you're going to get to that end goal. And mm. I was like, wow, I love that. And then I explained yeah, like it to a friend and they said, 
Yeah, it's from How I Met Your Mother. <laughs> I was like, oh. Yeah, but it's still okay. great. It's still it's useful. Still, yeah. yeah, it's still really good. But I was like, wow, this guy yeah. is so wise. Yeah, and wow. I love well, this yeah, analogy. Yeah. <laughs> but that, no, that's brilliant. Though. That's a great analogy. It's like, so it's, true. It's great. Yeah, it's one so step true. at a time. One step at a time. Mm -hmm. But make sure your environment around you is positive. Definitely. Because people will love to bring you down. When people see you being successful, they will love to bring you down. Mm. And that's a shame. That's just human nature, unfortunately. Yeah, and it's funny how... Sometimes people you've just met are almost like your biggest cheerleaders and then yeah. people you've known your whole life, they kind of like drop away because yeah. they don't want to see you yeah. doing well. Because it's almost like because you start in the same place as them, mm. because you're now like levels above, yeah. they don't like that. Yeah, 100%. So environment is yeah. really key. Massively key. The most important thing. And that's in your relationship as well. Mm. I think my mom was says to me, the most important decision I'll ever make is who you're with. Yeah. So you make sure your partner is because I, I'm I, I work my nuts off I'm a workaholic and I need a switch off mm. but I need someone that understands that they need to be part of my journey they need to support me and um they know my intentions are good you know what I mean and yes I have to prioritize myself and yes I want to prioritize my partner but right now while I'm young I gotta prioritize my business because I'm trying to build an empire for me and potentially you and the family so mm. yeah so it's quite tricky actually dating right now yeah. and i'm sure a lot of young people who are trying to be successful yourself you're hard working it's, it's quite tricky having a relationship because a lot of if you're with someone that's needs a lot of time and quite let's say needy or aren't confident in themselves they will require a lot of energy from you and i've experienced that where a lot i get a lot of energy sapped out for me because they're not confident in myself so they're trying to gain some of my confidence mm. but for me i'm like i need someone next to me who's just as confident got their own thing going on and we can build this together so i yeah. think having your relationship is so important because i've seen a lot of friends i'm not gonna say name names <laughs> um be in relationships where then then they're, they're not reaching their full potential really mm. not reaching their full potential and it's, it sometimes can be just simply because who you're dating yeah, that's really interesting. And I had a previous guest who um, admitted that he'd been in a relationship and came out of that five year relationship so lost. And he was like, why do we normalize like relationship weight and mm. settling when mm. you're when you're with someone? It's like you should be with somebody who wants to make you the best version yeah. of yourself. Yeah. And you lift each other up. Yeah. Like, why? Why would you settle for less than that? I know. It's shame. So I don't understand how people want the other person to lose their fitness or lose their health because maybe it makes them feel comfortable that they're not going to go anywhere. Mm. And that's a shame. Or you just, I guess you just get comfortable. You get comfortable, you do. Yeah. You do get comfortable. But one of my best friends is, uh, she's never one to want a relationship. Mm -hmm. She's so independent and strong-willed and she's, she's got so good. much going yeah. for her, which is so good. And she's recently met someone and she said, I feel like the biggest difference is that he, he, has also got his own stuff going yeah, on so and so together we come together and it's like we're helping each other grow yeah i was like i love that yeah for her power couple <laughs> power couple <laughs> absolutely well i feel like i'm gonna waffle on for ages um <laughs> but just to round this up where can people go if they want to find you inquire about like uh online coaching or anything yeah like um so instagram is my main thing mm -hmm. um so Bradley Simmons on Instagram, if you want to get in touch with, well, I've got my Get It Done app, which is my lower ticket. So if you can't afford the 200, 150 to 200 pound a month, yeah. I've got loads of guys, loads of programs, loads of nutritional advice and help on the Get It Done app, which is great. I spent the last six months working on that. So I'm slightly tired from it, <laughs> um, but it's brilliant. It's one of the best apps out there for sure, I can say. Um, but then if you want a higher ticket, online coaching and you can get that tailored program, you can have that communication with myself and my great coaches who I've just brought on board as well. Um, and then you're definitely going to get results. So yeah, you can find me there. If you want more information, literally give me a DM. Um, I'll be more than happy to have a discussion. Amazing. Thank there you, you so much. Oh, it's been brilliant. No, it's been really, really nice. And uh, so funny. One of my mom's friends, like they all love the podcast. Yeah. Uh, and she said to me ages ago, she's like, Ruby, you should get Bradley Simmons on. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> so I really hope she's listening because yeah. um, here we are. So there you go. Amazing. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you talking to me today. And I feel like everyone's going to leave feeling inspired. And Hopefully. Motivated. That's the goal. That is what we want. That's, that's what we that want. That is the goal. That's the only thing we want. Thank you very right. much. Take care. Thank you, everybody, for listening.